Hello everybody, Bradley here, still trying to get that Jameson sponsorship that hasn't rolled in yet. Today is Spy Day, we are going to talk about spies a little bit in this video. It's kind of a tutorial, kind of an info session, kind of my opinion, so it's a good mix of talking about how I play the game, how I approach spies, and maybe some little tidbits, info, and a bit of knowledge you didn't have before. Before we hop in, check out the description, there's links to a whole bunch of things. If you want to come check us out live, the game we are going over, this is a Catherine game where we talk about spies. We actually played this game on Twitch and 1A Culture Game, although it looks pretty dominating uh, at the point of time we're hopping into it here. So if you want to catch us play the game live, twitch.tv slash Van Bradley, link in the description. We also have a Discord if you want to come and hang out and chat about Civ or anything else really. There is a Patreon there if you would like to help support the channel uh, financially a little bit and also want some of the perks of being a Twitch subscriber. Not everyone likes live streams, not everyone wants to subscribe on Twitch, but they still want to be in the subsection of the Discord, they still want to have their saves get save reviewed and those types of things. So that is there in the description as well. Obviously not at all mandatory or expected, just there if you would like to do it. Otherwise, let's talk about spies. Let's hop in. Let me know what you thought in the comments. I appreciate you as always, and I hope I hope you learned something in this video. Let's let's hop in. All right, so we are here in a game as Catherine. Catherine has a few spy perks for us that don't really change the way you approach how you use your spies, but do give us a little more to work with for this tutorial, which is awesome. This is a game we actually won a culture victory on Deity here. We were playing on twitch.tv slash Van Bradley. If you want to come check out games like this live, that is where we stream them. Link is in the description. And I just want to talk about spies for a second here. A lot of times when people either pop in the YouTube comments and talk about spies or come by the live stream and talk about spies, I kind of get the sense that when people pick up this game for the first time or as they're kind of learning, they think of spies as like some game-breaking thing that's really going to help them boost to victory. And while I think that's kind of true in some games, especially as you're playing Catherine, you have a, a few more options with what you can do with your spies in terms of how early you get them and, and when you can start getting them out and doing things for you I want you to recalibrate a little bit and let's think of spies for this tutorial as something that can kind of help retool or kind of hone your victory condition instead of something that's gonna set it up right if you are relying on spies to win you the game quickly that's just not what spies are good for but if you're relying on spies to supplement a victory. That's exactly what spies are perfect for. So we're going to do that little recalibration here as we get into this tutorial. So Catherine here gets spies at Castles Tech, which is awesome for us because it happens nice and early, which makes setting up this tutorial easy. But normally for you guys, when you are playing your games, your first ability to construct a spy will be a diplomatic service here. And then there's this grants the ability to construct a spy. You will have a certain amount of spy slots the same way you have a certain amount of trade route slots. You can only have so many at one time. And throughout the game, you can kind of look through the tech tree yourself, go to the Civ Wiki, and you can find out when you will be able to to get more spies but you start with one at diplo service and work your way up from there i think the max is like six or seven and then if you have owls of minerva which grants you extra spy capacity it's like eight or nine i could be a little bit wrong on that but that sounds right about correct i wouldn't expect to have more than six or seven spies in your game eight or nine with owls depending on whether or not you are catherine once you have the ability to build spies, you will build them in your cities just like you would build anything else with production. Spies can be a little bit expensive if you don't have, not gold-wise, but like production-wise, if you don't have a lot of production in your city. So a lot of people will get their first spy with the Intelligence Agency Government Plaza building. The Intelligence Agency is a second tier government plaza building. So once you build your government plaza, you will have to pick one of the first tier buildings. In this game, I picked Warlord's Throne. A lot of people will pick Ancestral Hall and absolutely nobody ever will pick Audience Chamber. And then you have your, your kind of pick of the litter. Obviously, Grandmaster's Chapel is very popular. Foreign Ministry, not very popular. And Intelligence Agency is a good, safe pick. So don't feel any reservations about building the Intelligence Agency in your games. Unless you have loads of faith to buy a military here, this is a very, very safe pick and is very very good for you to build it'll give you plus one spy and spy capacity which is awesome so you'll get that first spy you won't have to build it you'll get it via building the intelligence agency and you'll grab an extra capacity so if you already have diplo service and the one capacity you will now have the ability for a second spy and that is basically what the intelligence agency does for you 
Once you have your spies, we have a spy here. There, there's a few things people kind of get paralyzed. The first thing you have to think about is whether you want to be offensive or defensive with your spies and what you want your spies to accomplish in your games. Regardless of whether you want to be offensive or defensive with your spies or what you want them to accomplish, you should think of them as a little bit of an investment. Like most units, spies can get promotions, and those promotions make them a lot better. Uh, see the rock band for another unit where the promotions make them loads better than their original kind of rookie, uh, uh, rookie initial starting. I don't even know what I'm saying here. Anyways, your spies are going to start out as recruits. So if I go here to Gabrielle, Gabrielle is a recruit with no promotions, and you you want to get your spies promoted as quickly as possible. That is your number one priority regardless of anything else. What can I do to get the spy promoted even if it's not the thing I want it to end up doing? Because we are Catherine, our spies start with a promotion, which is amazing. It kind of takes the whole problem away from us. But your first priority, like I said, going to be getting your spy promoted. Once your spy is promoted, they become good at something and thus gives you the ability to easily earn your other two promotions up to the three promotions your spy can have, at which point you will have a master spy. To start off with, your spy is not specifically good at anything, so it's a little bit harder to get that first promotion, but once you have the first one, you can pretty much get the other two fairly easily. For instance, Gabrielle here can get Demolition to Sabotage Production, um, Disguise to take no time to establish a presence in an enemy city, and to Breach a Dam as if it's two levels more experience. Now, just taking a look at these initial promotions, Satchel Charges and Demolitions, they do something. They make the spy good at something, thus increasing the chances of it doing something and getting a promotion. Disguise doesn't. Right? So even though Disguise might sound good, takes no time to establish presence in enemy city, like, cool, but once it gets there, what's it going to be doing? Right? If it already has two great promotions and Disguise comes up, maybe that's something you want to be a little expedient, but you really have to think about how are you going to get this spy promoted to do what it is you want it to do? Especially, let's say I want this spy to siphon funds. For the whole game, I want it to go empire to empire and siphon funds and get a lot of money. Neither of these three help with that. So I'm going to have to make it good at sabotaging production or breaching dams, have it breach a dam or sabotage production to get promoted, and hopefully along the way, make it good at siphoning funds, which is what I want this spy to accomplish. Now, because most people don't start with spy promotions, unless you're playing a Catherine, there are kind of two basic ways to get your spy promotions. The first is, if you have Victor, I'm clicking on all the wrong things here. If you have Victor down to Embrasure, right? Military units trained in this city start with a free promotion that do not already start with a free promotion. That's a bit of a redundancy, but spies are military units. So if you have Victor, with a embrasure promotion. So that's the that's the third one. So if you have Victor, Victor has to have embrasure, right? You have to get it all the way down to embrasure here. So you get garrison commander and embrasure. It's the second one. My apologies. Now I don't recommend this just for the spies. Like I said, spies are tools to kind of kind of help shape your victory. They're not something I would like completely build around, right? So if the only reason you're getting Victor down here is just to get spy promotions, that's probably not worth it. But if you're going to have Victor anyway, going down to Embrasure, not too difficult to do. And the Spy promotions will be a little bit of a bonus. With that being said, all you have to do to get that free promotion is to build the Spy in the city with Victor. Victor has to be established. If you build the Spy in Curitiba right now, it'll start off like Gabrielle with a free promotion because Victor is there with Embrasure. This also works with the Intelligence Agency because the Intelligence Agency gives you a Spy. So if the Intelligence Agency completes building in the city with Victor that has Embrasure, remember it has to have that promotion. I've had people come and chat with me saying all you all you did was build victor and it's not all i did there's another step it does need to have embrasure but it works with the free spy you get from the intelligence agency as well that is the easiest way to get your spy promoted the next is to send it out to complete a mission so let's take a look at the spy mission screen i'm just going to make it good at sabotaging production here took forever to skip that turn i have a lot of units i gotta move around 
But we're here with Gabrielle. Gabrielle is promoted, which is what we're going for here. Let's take a look at the spy screen here. So your first option for promoting your spy is to go defensively here, right? Your spy can counter spy. We'll talk a little bit more about this in a minute. But I can put the spy in one of my own cities and it'll counter spy in the district I send it to. What this means is that if your enemy is spying, in that district and your spy is there counter spying, the enemy has a much lower chance of being successful and you have a much higher chance of either capturing or killing the enemy spy. So that's an option, all right? The other option is to send it out two other uh, empires in the world and have it take something from them, destroy something, whatever, complete a mission. Now your spy will promote if it successfully completes an offensive mission or a defensive mission. So in that sense, it doesn't really matter, right? Whether it's siphoning funds, sabotaging production, um, killing or capturing an enemy spy, all of those things will give your spy one promotion if they are successful. There are a few missions that don't automatically promote your spy, right? If I go to Sao Paulo here and I gain sources, spies will operate at two levels higher for 24 turns, that's not an offensive mission. I'm not taking something or destroying something from the AI. So that's not gonna give me a promotion. Same with a listening post. Increases diplomatic visibility. That is not going to increase my, or it's not gonna give me a promotion rather, right? Stealing a tech boost will, um, those types of things. Anytime you're kind of taking or stealing something from the AI, fomenting unrest will, uh, so that's kind of a good way to think about it. If you're not sure, you can just go to the wiki. Um, same with counter spying. It doesn't matter which district I put it in. If it successfully captures or kills a spy, it'll promote. But if no spy is there, if I put it in this campus to counter spy and no, no one's here, it's not going to get promoted unless it finds somebody and gets rid of them, if that makes sense. Now, the easiest way to promote, the easiest way to promote is to find somewhere with a commercial Hub, do I not have that option? This is fantastic. This is absolutely, does no one have a commercial hub? Dear good golly, Miss Molly, I set up this whole tutorial to show you this. Anyways, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to find an enemy city that you can um, go and attack. Now, I'm allied with Alexander right now, so if I go and click on Alexander, I cannot go and do anything. There's no possible missions there. If I place my spy, it'll still give me vision in the city, but it won't do anything for me. It'll just kind of sit there, right? What's good to know about this, though, is Alexander also can't spy on me. So if you are allied with, like, four or five people and you can't spy on anyone, there's a good chance that no one's spying on you either because the allies cannot spy on each other. What we're gonna do with Gabrielle though, is we are gonna pick an enemy city that we can spy on. So I normally pick one with a commercial hub. It is the best way to get that first spy promotion. But hey, you know what? Gabrielle is good at sabotaging production. So we're gonna send him to Birmingham. In in uh, the English Empire here, I don't wanna go to London right away. If England has spies too, they're more than likely in London. They're probably not in Birmingham, right? But you can click on all these cities and it'll show you what possible missions you can run. So nothing there. You can do these ones. So it depends on the districts, it depends on the city, but it'll let you know what you can and can't do in that city. Let's pick Birmingham, right? Oh, I can't, okay, never mind. Birmingham, I won't, I'm not allowed to. See, possible missions. Not on there, so let's go to London. London, sabotage production. So I have a 74% chance of sabotaging production. What you wanna do is you wanna go find a spot where you can siphon funds. Just keep clicking cities until you can siphon funds somewhere. Click gain sources, right? Once your spy has gained sources, it will operate at two levels higher. Siphon funds on this list will be at an 84% chance of completion, and you're going to siphon funds for that first promotion. Because Gabrielle is already good at sabotaging production, what we're going to do, let's send Gabrielle to London. We're going to send Gabrielle to London. We're going to confirm the placement. Once Gabrielle's in London, we're going to get him promoted again. About five turns later, our spy has arrived in London. You can see that our spy gives us vision of the city, right? So it gives us a real-time view of what's going on in the city. If that's all you want, right, you can just do a listening post. It'll give you extra di diplomatic visibility, and it can just hang here and provide vision, right? We have a 74% chance of sabotaging production now. That is coming from our 
demolitions promotion here, right? I want to increase that chance up even farther. So I'm going to gain sources. This is the first step to get your spy promoted. You're going to gain sources. Once your spy has gained sources, right, it'll operate at two levels higher. Then I'm going to sabotage production. You are going to siphon funds. That is the number one way, the easiest way to get your first spy promoted. Find a spot where you can siphon funds. Gain sources, siphon funds, and your spy will get that first promotion. There's an 84% chance. So you know what? Maybe it won't get that first promotion, but that's your highest chance of getting that first promotion. Now we're going to get to the part of the tutorial where we talk about what I think are the most effective ways to use your spies. Now that you broadly understand kind of how they work. I've rewound a few turns to bring Gabrielle back to Paris which is awesome for us. The first thing I wanna do is talk about offensive spies. So once you go and you get that first promotion, you ideally want your spies to have some kind of goal in mind. This is a subjective take. I'm one person who plays this game. There are a million ways to play this game. Go and find a broad view of civilization. Don't just listen to me and treat it as gospel, but this is how I approach using spies. If I want to use them offensively, right? And like once you have six spies, you're probably using some offensively and some defensively. If I want to use them offensively, the most useful things I can do are siphon funds and steal tech, right? Siphoning funds, going around the world and siphoning funds just gives you straight up gold. And that gold is versatile. I can use it to buy libraries. I can use it to buy units. I can use it to buy trade routes. I can use it to buy almost anything, right? So that versatility is very useful. Going and stealing tech boosts not only help helps you catch up in the game. I play this game on deity, right? And so it, it's a long time to catch up to the AI. Right, but a lot of these boosts are pretty freaking lame. Like, build three biplanes. Where's that boost? This is my least favorite boost ever. Build three biplanes. I'm never going to do that. I've never done it. It's never, ever, 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 ever going to happen. Ever, ever, ever. I'm never going to do this boost. So having a way to use my spies to get some of these boosts and go through the tech tree can be very, very helpful to speed up your game and helps bridge the gap between you and the AI. Some of the other missions that aren't as useful, right? Let's talk about them for a minute. If I go to London here, sabotaging production, pillage all buildings in the industrial zone. Like, yes, you've done something well. You're going to get a promotion, right? And until your spy has three promotions, you should focus on getting that promotion, right? But... But what am I really doing? They're gonna repair this in two or three turns. I don't really get a benefit. They don't really get set back that far. You kind of, it's just kind of meh, right? Steal a tech boost, that's so good, right? So that's amazing. Neutralize governor, like, yes, their governor's gone. If their governor's Pingala, maybe that's, that's help, but it's like, it just doesn't really actively do a whole lot for you. It's better than not doing it. Don't get me wrong. I'd rather my enemies not have governors than have them, right? But in terms of stealing a boost or siphoning funds versus neutralizing governor, sabotage production, like getting rid of a dam is the same way. Like, yeah, it floods. They repair the tiles. Five turns later, everything's back to normal. And it, it wasn't really that big of a setback in terms of this whole empire so it's really important that when you're going offensive that you have something specifically you're trying to achieve and those things for me are usually siphoning funds or stealing tech right we just played a game on twitch where i stole tech the entire game right this was the game this you know what this was the freaking game we played on twitch i won this as a culture game i just rewound this to where we got our first spy i parked my spy in england and stole tech the entire game i must have stolen 10 15 techs by the time the game was over just having multiple spies in here stealing tech that was the only thing i was focused on now, if you don't want to have your spies out and about, let's say you are being spied on heavily or you would like you're already ahead in the game and you just kind of want to hunker down and defend your empire. The most important things to know with counter spying are this. If you counter spy a district, all surrounding districts also get counter spied. It's very, very, very important to know that I even triple checked it on the wiki because that is that's what I've been going with for like a year now is that's how it worked. So for instance, if I want to counter spy this commercial hub, so our funds don't get siphoned, I can still put the spy in Leon, right? 
and, and counter spy the city center, and it'll take this extra district as well, right? If I want to, where's one with like a theater square? Here we go. If I want to protect this campus from being, or from having our tech stolen, but I also want to protect a governor, I can do both. I can put it in either the campus or the city center, and because they're next to each other, it'll counter spy both. So it's really, really important that you understand that because you can get your counter spies to do more than one thing at a time, right? If I go to Lally Bella here, It'll say, yeah, protect city center and all adjacent districts, protect campus and all adjacent districts. It's just very important that that equals the same thing because they're already adjacent to each other. Now, earlier in the game, the AI tends, and this is just my opinion, tends to try and take out your governors. And since for me, Pingala is the most important governor, it's giving me science, it's giving me culture, it's giving me great person points. It's pretty much carrying the game for me. I always like to put my spy in the city with Pingala and make sure they can't take out Pingala. If they try and take out Pingala, then I get promoted, which is amazing. If they don't, then I still have Pingala which is also amazing. And so when you're counter spying early on, the AI tends, and this is just, it tends to take out governors, right? Maybe it'll go to your campuses and steal tech. Maybe it'll go to your commercial hubs and siphon funds, right? If, if they are doing that, you should adjust accordingly. I find early on, once spies start becoming a thing, they tend to want to take out your governors first. The other things you want to watch out for, siphoning funds can be pretty, pretty terrible, right? So you might want to counter spy your commercial hubs, Right, you might want to counter spy your theater squares. Having your great works of art stolen is is pretty lame. Right, but overall, like if the enemy steals a tech boost, that's not the worst thing in the world. Right, like they get a boost, but you don't actively lose anything. When your governor gets pillaged, or your funds get siphoned, or your great works get stolen, you are actively set back. Right, and if you can pilot the game well, giving your enemy a tech boost isn't the worst. So I tend not to counter spy campuses all that often, and I counter spy city centers early, uh, commercial hubs fairly early as well. Sometimes theater squares, although in a culture game I'm usually allied with most people anyway, so they're not spying on me. But those are kind of the main ones. And then late game, you need to protect your spaceports because the AI will try to or will try to spy on your spaceports and stop you from launching all of your space missions. So you can just put your spy. It'll come up on the options here in your spaceports. That is the number one priority at the end of a science game is to make sure every spaceport has somebody counter spying either in it or next to it. I'm here now about 30 turns into the game. I have three or four spies out now. Now this is only because I'm Catherine. I normally wouldn't have three or four spies out at this point in the game, but we just siphoned some funds and we have another promotion here in Dion. And what I wanted to show you here is you want a good balance of promotions as you get towards your third one. There are all kinds of promotions that make your spies better at something, right? We are currently better at stealing tech, which is awesome. Right? I probably want to be better at disrupting rocketry as well, but there are promotions like this, like surveillance, right? When counter spying, all city districts are defended and plus one level at districts within one hex. So not only does it make your adjacent counter spying better, it also counter spies all the other districts. There are other promotions like when your spy is in home territory, all enemy spies in your territory perform at one less level. These promotions can really round out your spies and have an outsized effect. Because instead of being good at one specific thing, counter spying a district, right? It's good at literally making every spy in the enemy empire worse or good at counter spying all the districts in a city, regardless of where you put them. So don't sleep on these promotions like surveillance or the one that makes all enemy spies in your territory worse because they can have an outsized effect on how effective your spies are. Just make sure you are listening, listening to it. You are reading the criteria carefully. All right, this one's pretty obvious, but some sometimes your spy has to be in your empire or has to be out on a mission, right? If your spy is in your empire, counter-spying, all enemy spies are one less. So if I have that promotion, I can't send it out to siphon funds and still get the benefit back at home. So you just have to be a little bit careful about what, what the criteria are, what the prerequisites are to use that promotion. But some promotions like surveillance here are really, really great to round out your spy. If your spy is specifically good at counter spying, 
right? And it has surveillance here. It's just a really effective defensive spy. Same with if it's good at disrupting rocketry and when it's on an offensive mission makes all your spies better, then that's great as well. It's doing multiple things at one time and really rounding it out. So just don't, don't go for like... Don't go for siphon funds, disrupt rocketry, and um, destroy industrial zones, right? Take out one of those and put in something like surveillance along the way. Now, obviously, you don't get to choose. Like, you get a selection of three every time, so you might not get the ones you want. But the main lesson is don't sleep on some of these uh, complementary promotions because they can really, really help you out. I've loaded up another game here just to give you guys a good example of how um, how you can use your spies effectively in your own territory, right? Let's say I had a governor. In, let's do that. Let's put a governor in Kyoto. Just to let's Liang. What are you doing, Liang? Get out of Osaka. You're gonna go to Kyoto for now. All right. Let's do that. Let's put a governor in Kyoto. Now, if I get this spy to counter spy the city center in Kyoto. Not only is it protecting Liang whenever Liang gets here, it's protecting the campus and the commercial hub. Right, so finding these opportunities to make the best use of your spies can be really, really helpful for getting promotions because not only are you defending three districts here, you are also increasing your chances of getting a promotion because the spy that you're going to kill or capture from the enemy could be in any of these three, right? So you have a higher chance of even finding somebody to capture to give you that promotion in the first place. So that's another example of kind of what that looks like. The last thing I want to talk about is just this espionage screen here. Here it says all your, we have Ren. He's a spy recruit. That's no promotions at all. He's protecting the city center and all adjacent districts from enemy spies. And you can just use this to kind of keep track of what all your spies are doing. The main lesson I want you to take away from the tutorial is spies are not going to win the game for you, but they can really supplement how you're looking to win the game. Whether you want to send them offensively, and kind of catch up in the game, take some money, take some science, whatever it is you want to do. Whether you want to keep them defensively or already ahead, you want to kind of hunker down and make sure that no one steals your great works or your gold or your governors or anything like that. What I really want to impress upon you though, is that some spy missions are better than others, right? So really just, I don't want to tell people how to play the game. I want people, I want to give people knowledge and have them go and discover for themselves what works for them what strategies they like but just keep in mind that right like if you're siphoning funds i personally think that's a much more worthwhile outcome than sabotaging production if that makes sense so just think a little bit about how you want to use your spies but i hope this tutorial helped you think about spies in a new light gave you some information maybe you didn't have as always the civilization 6 wiki is amazing they have like a whole freaking like novel on spies if you want to learn a little bit more about them there but that's kind of what I wanted to to let you know. Don't sleep on some of the other promotions that aren't like obvious, like is better at getting funds or siphoning funds. Um, don't sleep on some of the ones that make other spies better, depending on whether your spies are in your own territory or out on the mission. Also remember Victor. Victor with Embrasure, we don't have him in this game. Like I said, I wouldn't get him just for the spy stuff. But Victor with Embrasure can give you some free promotions. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little bit of a tutorial slash info dump slash whatever you feel like you got out of this. Um, feel free to leave a like rating and hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Always love to hear from you. We have links in the description as well. Come check us out live. We have a Discord. We have a Patreon, all that kind of stuff. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you, and we'll see you in the next one.